and welcome to this new episode of Sunday with the Word of God. Let us be in the presence of God and invoking His name we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep His commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, for this command that I enjoin in you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, Who will go up in the sky to get it for us? And tell us of it that we may carry it out. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, Who will cross the sea to get it for us? And tell us of it that we may carry it out. No, is it something very near to you? Already in your mouths and in your hearts, you have only to carry it out. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Let our response be Turn to the Lord in your need And you will live I pray to you, O Lord For the time of your favor, O God In your great kindness Answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help O oh God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify Him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. For God will save Zion, and rebuild the cities of Judah. The descendants of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall inhabit it. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Him were created all things in heaven and on earth the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The Word of the Lord
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and bit him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured out oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Jesus Christ. Friends in Christ, today we have one of the most familiar stories from the Gospel, the parable of the Good Samaritan. The parable of the Good Samaritan. There are two questions evolve out of this parable. Number one, who is my neighbor? And then, to whom shall I be a neighbor? Who is my neighbor? You may have many neighbors, perhaps those who help you in need or in trouble, or your next door resident, or your relative. They may be rich or poor, at times professional doctors or engineers, poor or marginalized, and those who lead simple lifestyle. They may influence or no influence to your life. While the question, to whom shall I be a neighbor, is more radical. You can be a neighbor to anybody, let it be a stranger or an outsider, poor or rich, have or have not, sick or needy. To be a neighbor to others involves availability, sacrifice and sharing. And when you become a neighbor, you make a difference in other one's life. You can make a substantial influence in the life of others. This is what we see in the gospel, in the parable of today. The man who was a stranger and an enemy becomes a big, huge help for the wounded person who was abandoned on the side of the road. Its timely intervention brings back life. Its nursing and care of friendship comforts him and regains his confidence. The Samaritan man goes out of his way to help this injured man. And by doing so, he does a big sacrifice, sacrifice his time, labor, and shares what he has in order to take care of this wounded man. This is love of God and love of neighbor. It is his mercy and compassion for this man makes him the best neighbor. While those who were familiar and known as neighbors like Levite, or the priests ignore the wounded person and go unnoticed the struggle of others. As a result, 
they don't make any difference to that person or influence him anyway. Love of God and love of neighbor becomes obvious when one begins to make a difference in the life of others and thus generates a new society, a transformed world. So brothers and sisters, as Jesus says, go and do likewise and be good Samaritans. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love, and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. 
blessed our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We we fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, your families, dear and dear ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.